Okay, hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Honors from Off the Cuff. Today we have another follow up for you guys from the brand Knot. They were founded back in 2014 out of Tokyo, Japan. They're really most known for pioneering that mix and match a la carte style in terms of providing high quality Japan, made in Japan watches. Uh, they have nearly 17 manufacturing partners across Japan um, and more than 11 strap partners alone. They offer traditional Japanese craftsmanship and special techniques that have been passed down, handed down over many, many generations, which I find very, very cool. And um, they're really the only watch company who provide genuine Japan crafted leather and fabric straps as well. So even though you're just buying the watch head, they also do sell um, a bunch of cross compatible straps, which we'll definitely also give you guys a peek at here in the video. Uh, I recently reviewed their, uh, their kind of mainstay at the AT35 model. This is their ATC40. Um, it's an automatic chronograph and it's 40 millimeters in diameter. Now, some key common characteristics in design language when you're looking at a chronograph, you're going to see those external pushers, which basically activate timing functions, uh, multiple subdials to measure elapsed time, often featuring additional scales depending on the subgenre of the watch type. Now, um, this is essentially a premium made in Japan uh, automatic chronograph, uh, but it just the crazy thing is it only cost 110,000 Japanese yen, which is about a thousand bucks US, which is just mind blowing. Again, guys, that's just a rough estimate because uh, in terms of the exchange rate, you're just gonna have to check whenever you watch this video. But at this time, this is an insane deal. Uh, in terms of the fit and finish on here, guys, this uses a special Salaz polishing, which basically is that process of making these cases um, pretty much mirror polished. Um, you know, you've, you've heard it referred to as Zaratsu polishing, um, you know, from the likes of Seiko, as well as Swiss uh, black polishing or tin plate polishing. So these are actually finished in the uh, Hayashi Seiki manufacturing uh, studio, uh, which makes cases and finishes them for the likes of Grand Seiko as well as other luxury brands. So pretty impressive and their site is very transparent about these things definitely check the description for links um, and it'll give you a breakdown essentially of where things are sourced uh, you know it's it's actually very transparent which I like because they really do take pride in that they are a made in Japan brand um, and they really take that to the highest levels um, in that respect. So with all that said, let's go ahead, zoom the camera out, get this piece in hand and take a closer look. Okay guys, what a beauty we have here. Look at those hands, they're very Grand Seiko-esque in terms of the fit and finish, the Dauphine style with the flat brush across the top and then you get the beautiful beveled edges there. Really quite breathtaking. I'll give it a little squirt here and make sure we get all the dust off of it because this thing is absolutely immaculate, I have to say. So I'm gonna give you guys a chance to kind of enjoy it um, just because it's so gorgeous. So 40 millimeter diameter, only 13 and a half millimeters thick. And I know some of you are looking at this and thinking, oh my gosh, that looks really thick. 13 and a half millimeters thick for an automatic chronograph. Guys, this is a very similar movement um, inside my SRQ um, Panda, um, you know, Seiko chronograph. I mean, that's like a over $3,000 watch. Um, and it's like 16 millimeters in uh, thickness. But I mean, it does have a big box dome sapphire, but I mean, this is actually quite thin. Um, and uh, although it does have a bit of a slab side, in this case, whew, you can it actually, it's nice to have a slab side when you have finishing like this, because you can actually see more of it. You can see how uniform that brushing is. My goodness. And some of you are looking, oh, why are there two 
lug holes. So you have a top lug hole essentially for uh, standard two-piece straps and if you wanted to do a one-piece pass-through then you can actually put your spring bars lower so you can get a better center of gravity and make sure that the watch is very comfortable. So very nice that they thought of that. Uh, a little pedestrian on the case back here. I'll give it a quick wipe off camera just to make sure we get the full luster for you guys. Um, it is quite nice uh, as you can see. Very nice. Of course there's going to be some hairline scratches there. Um, but this thing is really, really pretty, guys. Very, very nice. Um, gosh. I'm really, really digging this one. Really beautiful. I mean, look at that dial. It is just so well done. It even has a little trick uh, date window there at the four and a half or essentially it's like a clear disc over a uh, metallic background. So when it switches, it just, I mean, they just put these little tricks in there just that to, to make it harder and more complex and ultimately more satisfying to just gaze at. Uh, so you do have a fixed bezel that is polished. You have a, a non-screw down crown, but it is signed. You see the pushers. Why don't we actually activate the chrono functions? Ooh, nice engagement. Let that run for a second, guys, and we'll talk a little bit about this movement. So it's a Japanese automatic Seiko Instruments NE88. It has a 45-hour power reserve, 4 hertz sweep on the seconds hand, so that means it's going to be um, 8 ticks per second, uh, which is very, very nice. Um, and then it actually has column wheel and vertical clutch systems inside. So um, this is just, you know, tip top in terms of the specs. Oh, yeah, that was nice. Oh, yeah, very, very nice engagement on there. And you might recognize those specs because it's very similar um, to <laughs> the movement, uh, the ADAR uh, movement that's inside uh, my Seiko chronograph, which costs about three times more than this. Um, and it's, it definitely is not three times the watch. Um, so this is a real testament to their level of fit and finish. Um, my gosh. I mean, that's the one bad thing about having a watch that's finished as well is that... Um, you know, the polish is so beautiful that any smudge, you're, you're really going to notice it. Um, and you're noticing it right now on camera. So this is one thing, like, it's going to look really great static for you. Um, but, yeah, once it starts, you know, you are going to get fingerprints on it here and there. Um, but I, I have to say, it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, that mirror finish has a luster to it that just... Um, you just don't normally see and the brushing I mean it takes a lot to kind of activate that level of enjoyment when you look at brushing for it to actually look really impressive guys the brushing on this is bonkers I'm trying to kind of let the light catch it so you can get a better idea but this is a gorgeous gorgeous piece uh, in terms of the dial, um, not going to find any loom on it, guys, but you know what? It's not really a super sporty watch. It's definitely more of that kind of everyday dressy side, um, but it is a little bit more robust because it is giving you 10 atmospheres or 100 meters of water resistance. Of course, as long as that crown is pushed in, you have applied indices with polished um, bevels, um, which looks great. You have this great black sunray dial that's very subtle. It has the date at the four and a half. You get these brushed um, and polished bevel hands, that very Grand Seiko-like Dauphine style, which is great. And then in terms of the lugs, 20 millimeters, like I said, and then you have some different options. And uh, just to show that real quick, some of the options, here's the other model that I recently reviewed. Check that out. Some beautiful, beautiful options here. And all made in Japan. 
look at these great textiles and then you know like I said there are of course lug holes if you didn't want to do a single pass through here's an example of what they have to offer from that end beautiful silk single pass through strap I feel like this um, is a bit youthful in terms of this particular design um, but the quality is insanely good, so uh, I'll de I'm definitely going to be searching this site uh, to see if they have any other combinations that might be a little bit more sedate, um, but just in this style because the fit and finish, even on the straps, right, and, and they're also, of course, all made in Japan, just really, really impressive. So I'll scoot these guys out of the way. Let's actually get this piece um, on the wrist and show you guys how it wears. All right, guys, on my seven and a quarter inch wrist, look how beautiful that wears. And again, 18 millimeter um, lug width, but with the non tapering strap, it actually just, I think it looks great, man. They really surprised me with that. Um, and then you can see in the light, the subtle hints and hues of texture from that sunray dial, very nice. And then even the date is really non obtrusive. I think on paper, you know, you're going to think it's going to really stand out, but then you actually look at the way this thing transitions under light and at angle, and it just, everything honestly blends really, really well. On my seven and a quarter inch, you can see it actually wears pretty nice. I mean, that's not super thick. Of course, it does have more of that slab side versus having some, you know, uh, additional contouring like you might see um, from a Seiko or Grand Seiko. But in this case, because of the thinness, I should say, or, or lack of being overly thick, uh, I think it just wears absolutely fine. And, and it's very, very handsome. Um, and it just, has a premium air about it and it's not doing it by being flashy or in your face it's very classy a versatile and subdued which i really really enjoy right now so this is just such a handsome piece look at it roll there look at the way it rides on the wrist really quite handsome this strap of course is the premium uh tochigi leather um definitely check the links in the description there guys it's 70 millimeters length on the buckle end and then on the tail end it's 130 millimeters and it is absolutely gorgeous no break in required it just wraps around the wrist great full grain leather uh the edge i'd say is a bit more of kind of the i mean it's a finished edge but it's not quite, I think the underneath is more kind of the raw style. So it does, it might catch it a little bit here and there. So I wouldn't say it's breaking in in terms of the uh, flexibility and the pliability of the strap. Um, but there is a bit, I'd say maybe a breaking period for just the under surface um, getting used to your skin and, and vice versa. So really gorgeous. Well, let's get it off the wrist. Um, get some low light transition shots because there really won't be anything in terms of loom. All right, I'll let the chrono seconds hand run so you get a little bit of visual interest while I ramble on here through the closing. But uh, there's no loom as you can see, so what this is going to be about is really going to be more about seeing how this thing renders in less than optimal lighting because you're not always going to be out in the middle of a field enjoying direct sunlight. A lot of times you're going to be, you know, walking. Uh, in and out of buildings, walking underneath overhangs, sh the shade of a tree, or maybe just spending time in your favorite automobile. So uh, I want to show you guys some mixed lighting conditions, some less than optimal conditions, as well as even some harsh conditions like here with this really high contrast uh, lighting, which would typically expose any type of just... Uh, you know defects within that finish in this case it just highlights those micro textures and subtle hues of of charcoal that sweep over the dial that gorgeous handset that grabs and holds the light and just puts on an absolute show so gorgeous guys really really digging this one look at that dial it all just comes together 
So closing thoughts on this one, guys. It has those premium luxury vibes, but in a more low key and versatile package, which I dig. Those side slabs really showcase the impeccable finishing work there. In terms of model variants, there's a white dial, there's a, this black dial, there's a blue, and those are all Sunray. There's also a vintage washi paper-like limited edition dial. Um, that's gorgeous as well. Um, I do enjoy this black dial one feeling like it is kind of the uh, the most versatile option. Um, but definitely check the links in the comments below to kind of check things out. In terms of comparable models, um, yeah, it just gives you a lot of Grand Seiko vibes. But I'd say it's a lot more sedate than, um, you know, uh, than and classic than uh, many of their more uh, current chronograph models so I think that's something that's really cool because yeah that's one thing that people don't necessarily love about Seiko is they're not always trying to give you a one watch option they really end up giving us so many kind of quirky options I think it's cool to be able to get something like this um, which is just infinitely versatile, can be worn with anything, can be dressed up, down, sideways, and back again. I mean, this thing is just that special. Um, so it's very, very impressive and very different than from what the likes of Seiko, Citizen, Orient, uh, you know, you name it, um, and what they would offer you. It definitely is in that higher echelon, that upper tier, that just breaks into multiples of thousands of US dollars. So very, very impressive, guys. Bottom line on this one, I would say I'm just blown away by this combination of fit and finish for the price point. Um, you know, this is a really, truly made in Japan mechanical chronograph uh, that is honestly an extreme bargain even at like Seiko Persage pricing standards, like not even just putting it up against some crazy spring drive chronograph, you know, um, uh, watch from Grand Seiko with like some ceramic case or titanium. I mean, you just compare this to uh, recent Persage uh, mechanical chronographs and this is still an insane deal. That's the crazy part, um, except this is at a higher level than your standard Persage watch. So very, very nice from that standpoint, guys. I hope that the fit and finish really revealed itself on camera. It's really tough, um, but yeah, this thing is sweet. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you liked the video, please leave a like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks, guys.